Hey you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going through the garden and I'm going to be doing as much pruning as I can um, and I'm going to show you what to prune and what not to prune. So let's get out there. It's January and my balcony garden is looking a complete mess. So we're going to go through and tidy up the garden today. So all of these nasturtiums here I'm going to pull these all up out and get rid of this. And then the same with the Black Eyed Susans, they've taken over the whole trellis. And as you can see, it's making the whole archway look really miserable. So yeah, that's the first task for today. My garden is my happy place. So. I normally put on some headphones, listen to some music and just zone out. I'm systematically working my way along the trellis and the arches, taking down the nasturtiums and the black eyed Susans. So interestingly enough, on those black eyed Susans, obviously everything along the arches and the trellis was dead and they are normally known as an annual. But the closer I got to the stem, the more I realised that actually that plant is alive. It wouldn't have made any new growth on those uh, dead stems. But actually, had I have just chucked it back down to the base, it would have produced some new growth. In fact, it's actually produced new growth here. So let me see if I can show you. There are some new growth points towards the base. And as you can see, the stems closer to the base are green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop it back a little bit more. I'm going to pot it up into a little container, keep it inside and see if maybe I can revive it. Who knows? It's probably a waste of time, but you know me, I can't give up on my plants. So let's just see how that goes. So as you can see, the pond's not as full as it should be. So I do need to top that up. But as you can see, Rapunzel here, that's the name of the grass, um, you know, she's doing the most. And remember in my last balcony tour, I showed you this hollyhock. So this hollyhock is three years old. She's already flowered. She's setting up this big old stalk. Um, and normally they will just be kaput after that, but she seems to be producing new growth here but it is covered by the grass so I'm gonna hack back some of this grass take off the stalk and we're gonna have a look at some of the seeds that I've probably got here in these old flower heads normally when you're chopping back a grass you want to chop back from the base but there's just so much fresh growth I decided to chop back all of the crusty old leaves and give it a little trim elsewhere okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to siphon off some of this water so that I can help to fertilise my roses. But I'm just going to use a clear jug so I can show you what the pond water looks like. I normally do a 25% water change on the pond every week, but I haven't done one for quite some time. So I'm taking a little bit more water than I normally would. But this is going to help me investigate the pond a little bit more. So here is the delicious pond water. And um, what I'll do is I'll just double check it, make sure that I'm not stepping up any fish babies. And it looks pretty clear. Use the pond water to water the roses. Same over here. And it'll be the same for the grapevine. And, and the honeysuckle as well. And 
the camellia, she's going to get some as well. Unfortunately, if you remember back to my, one of my previous videos, the geranium hasn't done too well at all. That was the frost. In fact, all of my geraniums have really suffered in that frost. The top of the plant is really soft, but as we get down to the base, it's hard. So I know the plant itself is not dead, but that might be part of my pruning, is just to chop off this dead bit and allow some new growth from the nodes down the bottom. Now that most of the plants on the surface have disappeared, that allowed more sunlight to come through to the bottom of the pond. And now that I've emptied it a bit, what I can see is some new growth coming from the lilies. So this red leaf there, this red leaf here is the start of the first lily leaves. And then here are my uh, water hyacinth and these are now just beginning to produce some new leaves. This pond is being completely filtered by all of the plants in the pond. I only have a solar powered pump in the pond. That's just to generate a little bit of extra airflow. Now I'm just going to grab some normal tap water and fill up the pond. And there you go, we have some super happy fish and a happy hollyhock. In my previous video, I showed you one of my delphiniums and I hacked it back. Now, I'm beginning to see some brand new shoots on the plant, so let me show you that now. But the problem is we've got these new leaves but we've got a tangle of grasses and this salvia is completely blocking the light. Now, because this is a grass, January is the perfect time to chop this back. So I'm gonna chop back some of this grass and then I'll probably rotate some of these containers that we have here. I just moved that container that had the grasses and look what I found underneath that container. In the UK, we call these wood lice. What do you call them? That's just another reminder that even a small space garden like mine really has its own ecosystem. So make sure that you are really paying attention when you're moving your pots around. Wood lice play a vital part in breaking down this leaf litter, which then re-adds nutrients back into the compost. Surprisingly, the stems from this Little Miss Red Miscanthus were so thick I had to reach for my big boy shears. Now, this here is Starship Lobelia, and as you can see, everything all the way down is pretty much uh, over. But at the base of the plant, we've got some new growth coming through. So, what I'm going to do is chop this back as well, get rid of all of this top layer. Now that it's got a bit more light to it, hopefully this new growth will take over pretty quickly. As you can see with this container here, it's obviously finished, but I've left it over winter. And as we go down to the base of the plant, you can see all of this fresh new growth right here. And the same with the salvias over there on that side. So what I'll do is I'll make some chops around the base and the plant will start to make new growth and new tall shoots in no time.
I decided to inspect some of my other containers because they house quite a few perennials. Surprisingly, some are still going. However, this container was a far cry from what it once looked like when it was a part of my show garden at Chelsea. I noticed that the Ligularia was nowhere to be seen, so I did a little bit of investigating, trying to get to the bottom of the container to see what had happened. But to my dismay, this is what I found. What was once quite a large plant was nowhere to be seen. So I decided to do a little bit of digging in that container to see if I could find out what the cause was. But as you can see, it is completely rotten away. This piece of the plant came away so easily and I decided to go into the bottom of the container and see if I could investigate the rest of the plant. But as you can see, it is completely rotten. It literally was crumbling away in my hands. It's a real shame because I absolutely loved this plant. It does so well in a shady area. So I was doing a little bit of rummaging around in one of my containers and this is a mega caramel hookera. Now as I was rooting around, this part broke off and I realised that I've got some uninvited guests. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see, but I'm going to see if I can get you a closer look. There were small cavities all the way along this stem. Imagine my surprise when I looked into the cavity and saw this. the nerve to even be looking at me like I'm disturbing you. Now there is a tiny bit of a root system there so I could potentially keep this plant going. I believe that that is a caterpillar due to the legs. I had to put my camera down because it was a battle to get this little beast out of my plant. And don't be fooled, he's just playing dead because little old me went to go and get some more utensils. I came back and he had disappeared. The nerve. Cha, anyway, I wasn't going to let that stop me. So I decided because this plant had so much new growth on it, I was going to take back some of the dead leaves and then pot it up in this container. So here is the hooker. Huh? And I'm just going to... Oh, wow. I was expecting a little bit more of a pull here. So there's a little bit of new root growth at the bottom, but the vast majority of the plant has died back. But as you can see, the leaves are still awesome. Once again, I decided to look deeper into the container to figure out what had caused this root loss. Not only did I find fungus flies, but I also found something else. So this slug was in that container. There's a couple more I found as well. And so these have probably been, been munching away on the roots of some of those plants in there. So I'm gonna try and rest, oh, look at it. So I'm going to go through that container, take out as many of these slugs as I can um, and then look to try and rescue my hookerers. Where are you going? Alright, I need to put the camera down. <laughs> At this point I just decided that anything that was still alive I was going to dig up and repot. Hookerers are super hardy so I was pretty confident that given a little bit of time these guys would be okay. I decided to use my fresh homemade compost for these new plants. I added in a little bit of perlite to the mixture. Hookerers don't tend to enjoy wet soggy soil especially at this stage. I then use a little bit of my pond water just to give them a little bit of a kick start. I ended up with three hookerers in total, so this plant had actually divided, I just didn't know. 
I then repeated the process with my Corex grass and also the Osteospermum and the Salvia that was in that container as well. I had no intention of doing any of this until a little bit later on in spring, but having seen this pest infestation, I thought it was best to just bite the bullet and do it now. If you're new to my channel, I don't believe in showing you that everything is perfect. Sometimes hurdles come up in your garden and you just have to deal with it. And that's okay. <laughs> One of the issues I have at the moment is an increase in pests. I've shared before that I struggle getting beneficial insects up here in my garden. But now I've got to make a decision. Do I leave these pests that I have on my crops or do I do something about it and intervene? Um, if you know me, you know how much biodiversity means to me. So, having to go in and take out some of the population it really irks me however left unchecked what it would mean is the aphids and the white flies would multiply to a point where my garden wouldn't be able to cope unlike a ground level garden there's no real balance come late spring early summer i will tend to get some beneficial insects but in the meantime, I need to wrestle with my conscience and figure out what I'm going to do. Let me know in the comments what you would do if you were in my situation. Well, this has been pretty much a dumpster fire of a video. <laughs> Listen, does anyone else do this kind of stuff? You start out trying to do one thing in your garden and then all of a sudden, uh, there's just chaotic mess everywhere. <laughs> Um, and all those things that you set out to do, you didn't quite manage to do. Anyway, it is, let me know in the comments if you do the same. <laughs> so in next week's video, hopefully some of this will be sorted, but I think what I'm going to be doing is making my way through some of these containers and probably continuing what I've just done, separating out some of these plants. And I think it's high time that uh, maybe I start to actually plan my garden and have an idea of what on earth it is I'm going to do. I'm starting a workshop on my Substack, so my weekly newsletter. Click down below, it'll either be in the comments or in the description box. There'll be a link going over to my newsletter where you can join my workshop and I will go through how to create your own small container gardens and we'll go through everything step by step, week by week. And I think it's probably high time I start to take my own advice. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me and hopefully I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye. If you are struggling with your garden, you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation meeting with me on my website. I'll leave a link to that below. It's my goal to try and encourage as many of you as possible to use your small spaces. Hopefully, I will see you all again soon. Bye.